I hope you all are doing well. I'm going to read two books this morning. What Would You Do With a Problem, written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by May Bensom, and one of my favorites, On's Anger, by Gail Silver and illustrated by Christiane Cromer. We'll start with On's Anger. An was in the living room, building a tower, the tallest tower he'd ever built. His grandfather was in the kitchen, making dinner. On, grandfather called out, dinner is ready. On added a yellow block and smiled. The tower was almost as tall as he was. Now the red one, On whispered, placing a red block on the very top. Grandfather came in from the kitchen. What a wonderful tower. It's not done yet, An told him. Come sit down, said Grandfather. You can play more after we eat. He set the plates on the table and returned to An, who was balancing a green block on top of the red one. Put your blocks down now, said Grandfather. Dinner's getting cold. An wanted to keep playing. He opened his mouth to speak but his bottom lip quivered and the words wouldn't come. An's eyes filled with tears and he started to cry. Grandfather tried to put an arm around An, but An pushed him away, knocking the tower over and sending the blocks flying. Go away, I hate you, An shouted. You're upset, said Grandfather. Please go to your room and sit with your anger. I'll come in when you're calm and able to talk. An ran to his room and leapt into his bed. His cries grew so strong he could feel them all the way down in his belly. How do I sit with my anger, he wondered. I'm so angry, angry, angry. Finally, said a voice. I was hoping you'd notice me. An lifted his head and came face to face with a hairy, red creature. Who are you? asked An. How did you get into my room? I'm your anger, said the creature. You brought me here. My anger? The anger nodded. Did Grandfather see you come in? I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Don't worry, An. I'm not a stranger. I'm the part of you that comes out when things don't go your way. I'm right here every time you get angry. I know you feel scared when I'm around. I can make you cry and want to hit things. I can even make you say mean things to people you love. An's anger started to turn the knob of the bedroom door. Come on, I'll show you. An was tempted, but Grandfather had said to stay in his room. Wait, An called. Maybe we can do something in here. An's anger turned and extended his hairy hand. I know just the thing, he said. An took his anger's hand and together they danced all around the room. They raised their arms overhead and spun wide circles. They used their breath to make sounds like strong howling winds. They got down on their knees and pounded the ground with their hands. It sounded like they were playing drums on the earth, and An liked that. Finally, they were exhausted and ready to be still. An and his anger sat together silently. They sat. They breathed in. They breathed out. And they sat some more. I don't like to say mean things to people, said An, but sometimes I can't help it. I can help you, said his anger. How can you help? I thought you were the one who was making me do these things in the first place. That's true, but I'm also your friend. Whenever you feel angry, you should come sit with me. After we spend some time together, you might feel better. 
Spending time with you is kind of fun, Ann said. Do you want to stay for dinner? I think I'll be gone before dinner, said his anger. Are you sure, asked Ann. We're having ice cream for dessert. Ann's anger smiled. Ann smiled back. Ann was tired. He took a deep breath and let out a little sigh. And when he did, his anger became smaller. On and his anger continued to breathe together. With each in-breath, On's anger got a little bit smaller, and with each out-breath, On felt a little better. On heard a gentle tapping on his bedroom door. It was Grandfather. Grandfather and On sat together. I'm sorry I didn't listen, said On. I was really angry, and I wanted to keep playing. Grandfather took On in his arms. Thank you for your kind words, he said. I sat with my anger like you asked, On said. But we didn't just sit. We danced and played, too. Do you want to meet him? On looked up, but his anger was gone. Grandfather said, Do you know what happened? I think I do, said Grandfather. You took good care of your anger, and it went away. That's right, said An. How did you know? When I was a little boy, I met with my anger, too. Really? Was it because of blocks? No, laughed Grandfather. There were no blocks, just frogs, a lily pond, and a sun that wouldn't set. Come, let's eat dinner, and I'll tell you my story. And that's Ann's anger. What to do with a problem by Kobe Yamada, illustrated by May Benson. To the children's house on Zoe Lamb's third birthday. What do you do with a problem? I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with the problem, I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and I worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself, but it still found me. The more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. So even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity.
It was an opportunity for me to learn and grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem is an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope you all are doing well and that these books can help you to solve some problems. Bye.